Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, well, the sun was shining. I assume it's kind of shining. But, uh, it's, it's been good weather, right? A little rain, a little sunshine, a little heat. Yeah, a lot of heat. Yeah, you're right. All right. Well, let's all stand. Let's start our worship today. And we're glad you're here. So be sure to tell him that, that you appreciate all he's done for us. A couple quick announcements. 
um, Father's Day breakfast. The ladies decide they are having Father's Day breakfast, and all the guys said, "Amen." <laughs> and 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 they, they they asked me, they said, "Is that okay?" And I said, "You had me at biscuits and gravy." So there will be biscuits and gravy there. Uh, Father's Day breakfast Sunday, June twentieth, nine thirty, when breakfast will be served. Uh, won't have Sunday school that day, so we can all come in. And we can celebrate Father. So, so be sure to bring everyone that you can with you. Uh, announcement here says, ladies, to help cook and set up, be at the family center around 8.30. Um, there is a list out there of food. Most of us already taken care of. But if you'd like to bring something, you can talk with um, Elizabeth and she will help you out there. July 4th, later on, July 4th. Remember, I got these out last week. Do you remember what these are, guys? The ribbons. Be because July 4th is... On a Sunday this year, we're going to have an all-American picnic, right? And in the all-American picnic, we're going to have a pie-baking contest. So we've got first place ribbon, second place, and third place ribbon. If you feel like your cooking skills are up to par, be sure to bring a pie. And nobody has asked me to, to taste their trial run yet. So just let you know, if you need someone to, if you need to practice, you need someone to know uh, if, if it's good or not, I'm available. Okay. <laughs> Friday, June 18th. That's just coming Friday, right? Am I am I right on the day? June 18th is this coming Friday? Uh, we're gonna have a game night at the car stage at six o'clock Friday night. Till whenever. Uh, bring your favorite games. I'm sure there'll be some card games, different things going on. Bring some snacks to share if you'd like. Any any and all are welcome. Friday, six o'clock at the car stage for a game night. Um, are you all ready to sing some more? A couple of us are, you know. I enjoy singing. I enjoy hearing you sing. So stand up and let's sing. Let's get our, our lungs ready to go as we praise God this morning. Remember your promise. 
So he says, let me look at the charts and see what's going on in the x-rays. He comes back, oh, maybe five minutes later and says, I don't know where that doctor came from, what he was seeing, because he's not had any strokes in any time recently at all. And it's like, okay, well, that makes us feel a little better. Right. So we went ahead and they went ahead and took him to Miami Valley Hospital. The next morning, we go to Miami Valley Hospital and they get an MRI at that hospital at four in the morning. When we got there, the doctor came in and said, that stone is no longer there. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, talk about praise the Lord. Yeah. So no surgery whatsoever. They are still continuing to keep him there to find out why he's still hurting his stomach. I'm sure it's because of that stone, but find out why, you know, he's not eating and all that. So he's going to be there for a couple more days. But, uh, you know, praise the Lord. He's, uh, he's, he's not, doesn't have that kind of issue where he has to have surgery. Right. What's so. his name? What's Pardon me? Virgil, Virgil, Virgil McDevitt Virgil. Whitey. We had special prayer for him Wednesday. And 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 so so the stone was there. So, the, so you're saying the stone was there and it was so bad he had to go somewhere else to get surgery, right? Right. And then and then when he gets to the hospital, they go, Oh wait a minute, there's no stone. Coincidence? I think not. We we give all the glory to God, amen. Yeah. Well let's give God a hand and hand back prayer. Tonight. That's good. Wow. The stone that was rolled away. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else have a praise? I'm definitely don't want to cut anybody off. Some people say to God, that does God still work miracles today? Yes. He does, doesn't it? He certainly does. That's good. Uh, the last week we started the, our, our series, Way, Truth, Life, and Discipleship uh, as a Journey of Grace. And and, and we looked at, at our life as a journey, if you remember last week, and, and, and how our journey has many twists and turns and, and, up and ups and downs. And, and sometimes we can't even see around the bend, can we? And we usually don't like those moments in life, but there's a lot of times in our journey that we can't see around the bend. And and we looked last week at how God's grace can change someone's life, can change their journey. And we looked at we looked at, and we, we looked at uh, uh, the person who wrote Amazing Grace, didn't we, John Newton? And we saw how God's grace literally drastically transformed his journey through life. And we saw how God's grace could turn his life into something completely different than what it was. We saw that, didn't we? We studied that last week. And, 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 and you know, when I look back on my own journey, I, I, can, I can see now on this side of it, I can see now how God was working before I even knew He was. You know, in elementary school, about fifth, sixth grade, I, I became good friends with, a, with another boy in class named Todd. And, and we became best friends. And through that friendship of, of a couple elementary age boys, our families became really close friends. And it wasn't long before every Saturday our families were getting together. Todd's younger sister and, and my younger sister were good friends. And, and, and our parents and, and their parents have become really, really good friends. And, and, and about this time, they started attending a church in Williamsburg. Have you ever heard of Williamsburg? Yeah. Anybody ever heard here of Williamsburg? But they started to attend church, this church at Williamsburg, and, 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 and they invited us to join them one day. So my dad did, did what any good father would do. He sent me to go check it out. <laughs> he said, I want you to go with them and, 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 and see what it's all about and give me a full report. 
So I did. I, I went with my best friend Todd, and of course we were in Sunday school class together, and then and, and we had the, the church service, and, and I came back, and, and Dad he said, Well, how was it? How was it? I said, Man, my Sunday school teacher was awesome. She was she was so great. Reframe, anybody remember me reframe? You talk about a perfect Sunday school teacher to have for a 12-year-old boy to walk into church for the first time. She absolutely loved all of us kids. And I said, you know, I said, everybody in the church was friendly. And 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 and, and so as we kept going and going, and, and, and eventually they said, you know what? Let's go ahead and go. And the whole family came and we filled the pew up. We were we were in the pew and and, and, and and Todd and his family was either behind us or, or in front of us, you know. We would we would switch back once in once in a while just to change perspective from one pew to the next. Some of y'all ought to try that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Did I say that out loud? Are we creatures of habit? We are, aren't we? And that and that's perfectly okay. I get it. That's fine. But you know, the, the, and, and, and my friendship with Todd. You know, even though I didn't see it at the time, I could see God's grace working through this. We we become friends, and 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 and, and then then our families become close friends, and and an invitation to church, and and the response of the church to this twelve-year-old boy coming in for the first time. God's grace was in every single step before I even knew what grace was all about. You can say that grace was sneaking up on me, <laughs> setting me up to transform my life from then till now. You know, our denomination, we believe in what we call prevenient grace. We've all heard that word, haven't we? Prevenient grace. What is prevenient grace? Well, it's the grace of God that goes before us. Simply put, it means this, that God loves you so much that he is reaching out to you with his grace even before you realize it. We believe that. Do you believe that this morning, church? God is already at work before we know he is at work. Isn't that awesome? Think about that for a minute. God is already working in, in, in your life and, and in others' lives before they even know he is at work. Prevenient grace, the grace that goes before. We believe that God is reaching out to, to people even before conversion or even before salvation. God is reaching out to us. We believe that, that we do not just wake up on our own one day and go, you know, I, I, think, I think I've got this desire for God. You see, what happens is God's grace is reaching out to you before that moment. He plants that thought that desire in your heart and in your life to turn toward Him. God's seeking, we can say amazing from last week, grace. There's a great example of this in the Bible. It's in Acts chapter 10. It's the story of Cor Cornelius. We know that story, don't we? Many of you do. And, and, and here's, what, here's the beginning of it. It says this. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. I love that name. Do you guys like the name Cornelius? Somebody name their kid that. <laughs> At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. One day, about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius! And Cornelius stared at him in fear. I can relate with you. If I saw an angel, I'd be right there with you, buddy. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon who was called Peter. Where do we see prevenient grace? Where, where do we see God's grace reaching out before we even know who God really is in this story? We see the story of Cornelius. It takes place in the city of Caesarea. And Caesarea, though it's in the center of the region politically at the time, the, there's a couple things going on. It's, it's a crossroads, if you, will, if you will. It's a crossroads of the Jewish-Gentile world is happening right here. You've got Rome. 
you, you, you've got you've got you got the power of the day, the Roman authority, and you also you have Jewish religious influence in this city, and they come together, and that often leads to tension, doesn't it? Crossroads and tensions of life. Cornelius, he was a God-fearing man. The Bible tells us that he—he he, he, was—he—he he was already inclined, if you will. He was already moving toward the tradition of the Jews. So, what's that mean? Well, I think that means that, that grace often sneaks up on us in the tensions and the crossroads of life. As Jesus followers, you and I, as Jesus followers, he, here's something that we need to pay attention to, church, I believe. We need to pay attention to this. It, it, it's, it's at the crossroads of people's lives. That means you are willing to walk with them through the good and the bad, right? You, you are there. You are going to walk this journey with those that, that you love, those that maybe you work with, your, your family members, those that you see. You are walking this journey with them. Pay, pay attention to the, the, the places of tension. The, the, the crossroads in life, because that's often an opening for grace. And you, my friend, can be a vehicle for that grace. In the book that we're reading on Wednesday nights, and once again, I invite you to come and join us at 7 o'clock in the Family Center on Wednesday night. To, uh, Dr. Busick, who is one of our general superintendents, he, he, he quoted Lovett Wings, and he said this, uh, Mr. Wings did, he said, God seeks us before we ever seek God. God's always first. Okay? He says, the, the initiative of salvation is with God from the beginning. God always initiates that first. And he says this, I love this. Before we ever take a step, guess what? God is there. Amen? Amen. I believe that 100%. Put simply, love it is saying that no one wakes up on their own once again. No one wakes up on their own, on their own, and says, you know what? I think today's a, a, a good day to, to check out this God thing. That's a good idea today. I'm going to start becoming a follower of God. You see, anyone who turns toward God is already receiving God's grace. It is because of God's grace why we can even turn toward the Holy God. That's an unholy person. You know, another way that we that we see God's grace, that uh, prevenient grace at work in others, I believe is curiosity. Curiosity. I love when people become curious, don't you? I love when people ask me questions. And, and, and I love to ask questions if I'm in a situation or someone may be working on something that I, or, or reading something I may not know about. I like to, to ask them questions to see what that is. Maybe I can learn something from them. Well, guess what? Sometimes people ask us questions about Jesus. That's a good sign right there when, when people do that. And they, and they, they begin to ask questions. They begin to show up in spaces that they don't ordinarily show up at. Maybe people start to hang around you a little bit more than they used to. Hmm. The beauty of prevenient grace, remember, is knowing that God is already at work in that person, in their life. For quite some time, Cornelius, the person we're studying this morning, he was curious about several things. And we see that, we see how, how grace worked in his life and, and, and he demonstrated curiosity because he learned to align himself with the Jewish traditions even though he wasn't a Jew he saw something in them he saw some of their traditions and said I like what they're doing he, he, he even you know he even he even started applying some of those to his own life generosity and giving to the poor and helping people out even though he wasn't a Jew, therefore he couldn't necessarily go into all the places that they could go into, but he aligned himself. He got as close as he could to learn more. He was curious about what was going on, and then God had put that in his life, and, and, and he's like, this is for a reason. What, what is going on here? And he's trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. He's asking questions. He, he's seen them do things and said, I like that. And he starts applying them to his own life. God's grace is pulling him toward God. We should never, ever underestimate 
the company that is being kept as an indicator of prevenient grace. People are hanging out with you on purpose, for a purpose. You hear that a lot from me, don't you? God has you where you are right now on purpose for a purpose. God, he, he is setting up those, 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 we'll put in air quotes, chance meetings with people on purpose for a purpose. People come into your life on purpose for a purpose. Often it is because they are seeking grace. And guess what? You, if you're a Jesus follower, you can be a vessel of that grace to them. They can learn from you. They, they, they can see what you're doing. They can ask you questions. I love when people do that. You know what I found to be true in my life? I'm sure you have too. That God, He uses people who show up. The, those who say, I will walk this journey with you. And in the crossroads and in the tensions of life. Even, even when, it, when, when you're in a crisis moment, I will be there with you. God uses those people. And God, He uses people who are willing to be present in the tensions and the crossroads of people's life. God, he uses companionship, your friendship with others to, to fuel the fires of curiosity that, that is burning in their lives. You know, Cornelius, he, wasn't, uh, he was kept away from many of those spaces because he wasn't Jewish. He was a Gentile. He wasn't allowed to even go into certain places. But guess what? His life was in contact with many of those who had faith. Many of those who, who believed in God and, and who trusted in God. He had contact with them. He, he was rubbing shoulders with them. We know that Cornelius, that he was highly esteemed among the Jews. He was no stranger to the people of faith. He, he was hanging out. He, he, he was going to the places that, that, that most Gentiles would not go to. Man. He was hanging out with them. He was asking the questions. And when provenient grace led him to a crisis moment because trust me, if you, have, if you ever see an angel in your life, it's probably a crisis moment. I would classify it as that, wouldn't you? If I saw an angel, I, I wouldn't be like, oh cool, it's an angel. I would probably be like poor Jesus. And in fear, I'd say, what is it, Lord? <laughs> what is it? That's a crisis moment, isn't it? I believe that that prevenient grace, that God's grace brought him to that moment so then Cornelius, his first act of obedience in that crisis moment was what? To call for a Jew. But he didn't know. Peter. God's grace got him to that moment. Prevenient grace. And prevenient grace has a way of lining our lives up with just the right people at just the right time. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes it may, it may be Jews in Caesarea. Sometimes it may be an elementary school friend. God's prevenient grace lines people up in our lives, in your life. So you can show them His grace. So, so Cornelius calls for Peter. And we're, you remember the customs at the time, right? Peter's, Peter is, is, is a Jew, and, 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 and Jews are not even supposed to really talk to and definitely not go in a Gentile's house because, you know, the, the Gentiles, they were heathens, what the Jews said. They even called them dogs. So he calls for Peter, and, and, and Peter comes. Well, well, what does Peter share with them when he gets there? We've got that as well. In verses 34 through 43, says this. Well, when Peter gets through the house, and, and then we'll kind of hit the backstory of that in just a moment, but, but when, when Peter gets there and then he walks into this house that, that he's supposed to not be in, but, but he was called by Cornelius in his household. And Peter is going to give them some of God's grace. He says this. Peter began to speak. He says, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. That is good, isn't it? He goes on to say this. He says, you know the message got sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. 
who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all, say all, all. and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. We are our witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. And we'll throw that in there. Jesus is the judge, not me, not you. Amen, church? All the prophets testifying about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. That's a pretty good message, isn't it? I love the way Peter just says, boom, here it is. Cornelius was ready to hear that message. Why? Because of the grace that was working in his life, that prevenient grace. Decisions. Decisions, they dot our journey of grace. Each decision that, that we make is evidence of grace at work, I believe. Decisions from true conviction, that, 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 is, well, that is, you're like, I, I, I should make this choice, but I'm not quite sure why, but I feel like this is the right thing to do. From those convictions, the, those decisions that we make, they're evidence of God's spirit at work, I believe, in the life of the one seeking God. We see conviction here in the life of Cornelius, I believe. There was conviction in, in, in him as, as he turned toward the Jewish religion. There was conviction in his need and in his help for others. He was asking questions. He, 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 was, in, he was inquiring on, to them. There was conviction in his upright moral behavior because as, 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 as a soldier, he was in a position that he could take advantage of people, but he didn't. He was upright in his behavior. There was conviction in his response to sin for Peter. God's grace said, go sin for Peter. And Cornelius did that. Conviction, I believe, it is something that is a grace that begins to align our lives to the kingdom of God. Even before we make the kingdom our home. Things don't just happen just because they happen. Things happen because of God's grace. Him reaching out to you and to me. Discipleship is important. Discipleship is very important. Prevenient grace. I believe prevenient grace, it, it was at work in Cornelius' life as far back as we can look as what we have in the Bible. We see that prevenient grace was in his life. And, and then by the time Peter entered the story, don't, don't miss this church, by the time Peter entered the story, guess what, Cornelius, he was already under the pool of grace, wasn't he? All Cornelius needed was for someone to explain to him what he was already experiencing, what had already captivated him. He just needed somebody to explain to him what was going on. Oftentimes, that's where we come in. When prevenient grace, when, 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 when the grace just, just sets the dominoes up, oftentimes we as Jesus followers, we, 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 are, we are the final one who, who can give them the story of Jesus. And they're ready to accept it. Why? Because grace has already been working in their life. God's grace has been reaching out to them. Prevenient grace, it, it was that work setting the stage for Cornelius to accept Jesus and, and his commitment to Jesus and his whole household. But remember, I told you I'd get to the backstory in a moment. You see, that same grace that, that I was reaching out to Cornelius that, that I said, you need to go find Peter. You need to bring him to you. He's got a message for you. That same God who's given him that grace at the exact time was also working his grace in Peter's life on a rooftop. Because Peter was, I mean, he was praying himself, but God was showing him some things. He, he, was, he, he was challenging preconceived ideas. 
He was showing Peter that, you know what, my love is so big, it's not just for the Jews. It's even for those air quote, those heathens, those dogs, the Gentiles. He's, he's telling Peter, well, my, my, my love is so big, you can't contain it. You've got to give it out to everybody. My grace is available to everyone who was telling him. He was dismantling the traditions in, in Peter's mind. And he was erasing boundaries. He, he was softening his heart and preparing him. Peter was being prepared so what he could do, so he could join God in, in the work that God was already doing. Amen, church, did you get that? When we allow grace to work in your life and my life, guess what? I don't have to start a work. I don't have to finish the work. I just get to join in what God is already doing. You see how that works? God's already doing the work. We just get to join forces with Him. Amen? That, that should take some pressure off of you right there. When you see God working in someone else's life, say, God, are you showing me that for a reason? How can I connect here, God? Connect the dots for me. You see, because for those of us who believe in prevenient grace, there is a responsibility to respond to God's prompting to show up, to be present, to discern the faithful movement of God that He's already working in others' lives. And oftentimes that takes us beyond our boundaries of comfort, doesn't it? But I like when, when he got done with Peter. And, and, and he showed him and then Peter allowed God's grace to work a new work in him when the men came Peter said here I am let's go and they went and, and, and now we see that that is the first time you see God's grace being, being handed to being given to the Gentiles it is now going out into all the world it doesn't matter your nationality doesn't matter the color of your skin. Doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, what you are currently doing. It doesn't matter how big your bank account is. It doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't matter anything. It doesn't matter what, what kind of addictions you may be dealing with right now. Jesus's grace is available to everyone. Amen, church. We believe that. We believe that, 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 as a matter of fact, God's grace is so available, He's reaching out to you before you even realize it. It's because of His grace that we are allowed to turn around and receive it from Him. So maybe this week, or that, as, as we move forward, look. Look at the places of tension in others' lives, at the crossroads. Because often, that is where grace will present itself. Just like it did Peter. And boy, did that change the entire course of the world. So what happened when, when, when Peter, when he followed God's plan, and, and he followed God's lead, and he took advantage of the opportunity to present the gospel to, to Cornelius and his family, when Peter said, God, you're working something there. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm willing to go and join you, God. And then what happened when that happened? What happened when, when Peter came and he gave that story that we just talked about? What was the result? Here it is. Verse 44. While he, Peter, was still speaking. He didn't even get the entire story out yet. It says, while, while he was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all, say all. all. Came on all who heard the message. And Peter was probably kind of like, wow, God, you're amazing. And then some of the Jews that came with Peter from Joppa, they were blown away. They were like, you mean God's grace is even for the Gentiles? That's why I, I like to tell people, you know, it don't matter who you are, what, what color you are, what nationality you are. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. It doesn't matter what, 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 what good you've done, what, what bad you've done. It, it doesn't matter the addictions that, that, that you may be fighting. If you walk into this door, 
We're going to love on you. Amen, church? Amen. We're going to love on you. No matter what's going on in your life, we're going to love on you. And we're going to say, we're going to say, let's walk this journey together and allow God's grace to work in their life. And when we do that, when they come to that crossroad moment where, 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 where the tension is in their life, and, and, and they decide kind of what we talked about last last week, that the, 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 they do the come and see, and then now they're at the following. What am I going to do? That, my friend, is right where you need to be. Maybe, just maybe, you can have influence on someone and lead them to Jesus. Why? Because God's grace done that for you. And God expects us to share that grace with others. And God is already giving His grace to everyone. And, 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 and if we allow God's grace to work in us like it did Peter, and say, okay, God, I'm not sure, but, but, but you want me here, so let's do this. I want to join in with what you are already doing. Do you want to join in with the work that God's already doing in others' lives? I think we do, don't you? Watch for the grace of God working in others' lives. And allow the grace of God to work in your life as a Jesus follower. And together, with God's leading, and, and, and what little bit of help we can do with that, by being used, by, by, by saying, God, you can use me. Allow that grace to work in your life and to overflow to those lives around you. Be ready to take advantage of the opportunities to join God in the work that He's already doing. Grace is pretty amazing, isn't it? Grace reached out to me before I even knew what grace was. I happened to be in elementary school and it came in the form of, of a friend and family. How can we extend that grace to others this week? If you're able, stand with me. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning, Father, and we are just in awe of your grace. When we think about the grace that you have given us, God, the grace that you have shown me, and, and before I even realized what it was, you were already reaching out. You were already planning my transformation, God. You were already putting people in place on purpose for a purpose. God, what's, what's exciting about that journey now, God, is, 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 that, is that now that I've received your grace and, and you have changed my life and, and your forgiveness and, and, and your love, and, and God, now, now, now me and as well as other Jesus followers, we get to be that person to help others now. And I'm so glad that grace never stops working on us. Just like Peter, he, he, he allowed grace to work in him. And it changed the ministry that he had for this world. God, this week as we are going, going about our, our, our work and our, our days and, and the people that we see, our loved ones, our friends, our families, our co-workers, our fellow students, God, the, those that we meet and those that we see, God, may, may we be looking on purpose and see if we can see your grace working in their life when they don't even realize it. And God, may we come along beside them and may we journey with them, Father. And, and when we get to that, that crossroads, God, may, may we hold on tight and may we extend your grace as you work in us and through us and all around us. We thank you for this lesson that, that we have of, of Cornelius and, and we can see and look back and see your prevenient grace working in his life, God. And, and we see that your grace is working in the life of Peter as well and how when that all comes together, it's perfect. It's what you want. Use us as your vessels, we pray, God, to, to, to give your grace to those around us. Thank you for all that you have done, all you are doing. We love you and we do honor you, Father. We worship you now, God, and we worship you the, the rest of this week by the way we live our life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. So the church, go over to meet Jesus and someone else who spread that grace to those who need it. We love you. God loves you. God bless you.